welcome everyone to season seven, episode five of the Focus TV. We are joined by, uh, with Octavia Wyatt. We got Cardo W. Jr., Wilson Tarpe Jr. And welcome to season seven, episode five. As you can see, Cardo is not home. He is <laughs> in the gym on the road at GW, checking in with us as they host Navy tonight. Cardo, I believe the first half is ending. Second half set to start soon. What's going on at the Smith Center? Yeah, second half is exactly about to start right now. Uh, DW posed a 33 28 lead. Uh, they jumped out to a 16 5 lead early. Looked like they were on cruise to a blowout, possibly. And uh, Navy had other plans. And they uh, put in a full court press trap. Uh, a lot of doubles on their ball handlers coming from behind and trying to strip the ball. And they missed the field team. Uh, they have. Uh, 13 of their 28 points off of 12 GW turnovers, and also GW's fouling a lot, putting them on the line, and they're 10 for 11 from the free throw line. Uh, that's the reason why the game is close. Uh, GW's defense, when they are set and not fouling or not turning the ball over, they're holding the Navy to 20, 25% shooting from the field, uh, 25, 25% shooting from deep. Uh, and they're shooting 50% from the field and 41% from deep. Uh, it's just some little things, man. It's just they're beating themselves right now. Take care of the ball, guard without fouling. It's as simple as that. If they do that, uh, they, they should blow the thing out. They keep struggling. Like right now, they just had a turnover. As a uh, it's going to be a dog fight. You know, and, and that's what happens when you beat yourself, man. Uh, you know, Gary Johnson's having a good first half. You know, he uh, very short freshman, of course. You know, finish, yeah, you got game high 10 points, four rebounds, two assists, and two steals. Um, you know, Bishop doing what he does, eight points, two or four from deep. Um, you know, it's, he, he, he get, you know, got to kind of take care of the ball better. You know, there's no other way to put it. He has four turnovers right now. Um, he's one of the main reasons. And, you know, he's, a, he's, a, he's the leader of the team, so he he knows he knows he can't do that. But uh, another white spot is defensively, uh, Agamola, six blocks already, six blocks. He had four blocks in the first half. And in the first minute, minute 28 of the game, he has three blocks. So he, he's, he's, on, he's on this Matumbo right now, literally, man. So he has seven blocks total for the game. He might finish with 10. Uh, I don't know what the record is, but I'm pretty sure he's threatening it right now, man. He, he's holding it down in the paint, man. But that's what they brought him here for, to be a defensive maker inside. You know what I mean? So you're going to see how it goes. Uh, but like I said, they clean those little things up. Don't stop turning the ball over. Keep them off the free throw line. They get what they went offensively. It shouldn't take long for them to build this lead and uh, cruise to a win. And that's that's a big thing. Uh, I know you've talked you've talked to us about how good of a start they've gotten off to. Uh, the last thing you want to do when you're at home against a team that's surviving off turnovers is to keep turning the ball over. <laughs> Some, sometimes yeah, really. one plus one equals two. Every once in a while, it's that simple. But give Navy credit. Some some of the turnovers have been just careless passes, trying to pass over double teams or bigger bigger players or whatnot. And they get a hand on the ball and it's deflected. Uh, but some of it's just Navy being crafty. Uh, when the ball hand is driving up, somebody's coming from behind, from the from the B side, and coming behind them, stripping the ball. And they got about three or four steals off of that. So it's not totally just GW throwing bad passes. You know, Navy out here competing, they fighting. And um, it, 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 that's the thing in this college basketball season. That's why you see so many upsets. Uh, teams down at all, teams not scared of nobody, and they come in here to win. They come in here to win. So if you don't come into play, you know, you feel like technically on paper, you're a superior opponent by the name of the jersey and, you know, the name on their jersey. Uh, if you come in front, you, you go get your, you can get beat. You know, simple as that. So, you got time to play, man. But, and I can go for this eighth block, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, he, I, I got to see what the record is. It, it's crazy right now. But, uh, yeah, man, you know, it should be a good one. But, uh, you know, we got to leave DW right up in the second, second half, 37 28. So, we'll see if it, you know, they can hold on and build this lead. All right, y'all. The follow up uh, with Cardell for the rest of the game. Follow Finders Mag on Twitter. You got his handle right there on screen. Before he leaves us, Cardell, enjoy the rest of the game. We look forward to the update, and we'll see you next week. All right, Octavia, sticking with college basketball, um, we're going to go ahead and uh, slide over to the Maryland the Maryland woman. Uh, 
you know, the type of uh, start they've gotten off to this season wasn't exactly the type of start they wanted. Um, but, you know, we're here now. It is what it is, right? Uh, they had two games last week. They beat visiting Niagara 140, uh, 114-44. to 44, Sorry, I almost said 144. Renee Alexander went off. Um, she is the resident sniper for this year's team. There's always one. Last year it was Abby Myers and Brene. This year is Brene and whoever else can hit a three. But she is the resident sharpshooter. Uh, she had 29 points, uh, knocked down seven and nine threes. She only missed two shots, period, those two threes. She shot 11 to 13 on the evening. She also had seven rebounds. Maryland also had four other players in double figures in that one. Um, they had a few stretches of really good defense against Niagara, holding them to just 27% shooting from the floor. Bree McDaniel added 18 points, and freshman Riley Nelson had 15. Sunday's game, which is the highlights that you're watching, George Mason. Uh, literally what Cardell was just talking about on both sides of college basketball right now, both the men's and the women's game. Throw those, throw the names out the window. People are in dogfights. And they're in dog fights until it's not a dog fight. And shout out to Mason. You see, they came into this game seven to zero. They meant it. All right, they were about every bit of that business. Uh, Sonia Smith led the way with twenty one points, and Zahira Walton had eighteen points and fourteen rebounds. Maryland did get a very big game out of Cheyenne Sellers, uh, who finished with twenty eight points, thirteen rebounds, a double double for herself, along with five assists and two steals. One of the things in uh, this game from Maryland, unfortunately, um, they saw Bree McDaniel got, uh, she got banged up a little bit. Um, and then going into those two games, they ended up losing Emma Chardon for the season. Very tough news for Emma Chardon. Uh, another ACL injury, so wishing both of them speedy recovery, I believe. Well, obviously, Emma's out for the year. Bree McDaniel, it is day to day. That said, they got big, uh, big performance from Miss Faith, uh, Faith Masonis, uh, 15 points. Renee Alexander had 12, Maryland six and three on the year. And it was good to see some of Maryland's youngsters kind of step up in this one. Uh, we mentioned Riley Nelson in the game against Niagara. Her, uh, you saw Emily Fisher uh, get some minutes. Uh, I think she played almost 30 minutes in this one or a little bit over 30 minutes. So she got she got some, some great uh, experience as well. But you saw Maryland rally in this one. Credit to Cheyenne Sellers for doing what it is that she does. Um, she's extremely crafty, and 6'2 guards are annoying in women's basketball. It, it just is what it is, very annoying. Um, but the challenge, as I said last week for Maryland, is just continuing to grow in this iteration of the team. Um, they're going to have to do what they normally do, defend, rebound, and run. It's, it's that simple. That's what they're going to have to rely on. And it's everyone having to defend. It sucks that they've already lost. I'm going to start on for the year. Um, so those youngsters, here's Emily Fisher right here. Uh, those youngsters, you got to step up. It, it, there's nothing else to say. You just got to st step up. Uh, Ali Kubek's been great since she's been back, giving Maryland interior presence. Um, but it was good character to see them fight back. And, again, some of that's just been growing and brewing from those tough road losses they've had. Uh, was it literally last week we were talking about college basketball? Well, how tough it is. Teams are going to go through it. Uh, I think people are making a big deal about UConn. You know, I think they're out of the top 10 or something. For, bro, it's happening, okay? It is what it is. It, you're here right now. If you're not South Carolina routinely getting what you need and holding a standard of excellence consistently, bro, people are going through it out here. If you're not taking care of business, you're in trouble. There's transfers. You got. You still got some. This is kind of we're getting close to kind of like the end of the code, the extra COVID years or whatnot. But like it's the end of that. You got teams with a bunch of transfers. Maryland got a bunch of uh, vets. It's gonna take time for some groups. But again, I'm still a proud proponent of what Brenda's doing. Take your licks early. Figure out who you are. Get right. Get in the dance. Doesn't matter where you are in the dance. Get in the dance and do what you need to do. You want to be peaking by the end of the year anyways. Um, for Maryland, they're now 6-3 on the year. They're in the midst of the four-game win streak coming off those two horrendous losses on the road against, you know, in those, against two top opponents in their building. Like, it, it wasn't in Maryland. It was in South Carolina. It was in Columbia. It was in stores. Um, nobody likes playing either one of those places. It's not fun. 
Uh, they got Northwestern next week, which is their first conference game. So we'll see how that goes. Look forward to uh, sharing with you guys how Maryland does uh, to open Big Ten play. We're going to take our first break. When we get back, we're going to talk about those wonderful Washington Wizards and what they've been up to since the last time we spoke to y'all. Uh, Ray's not here this week, so I'm going to go ahead and do my best to fill in for him. You're watching the Focus TV, and we're going to get to the NFC East. Don't worry. We just had to move some stuff around this week. And shout out to Octavia. She did show up. And just for the record, I want y'all to appreciate how mature people are on this side because it could go a totally different way, but that's not what it's like over here. She showed up. We're here. It's all love. It's cool. We're going to take our first break. You're watching the Focus TV. We will return shortly. Welcome back to the Focus TV. As promised, we're going to talk about the Washington Wizards and what they've been up to since the last time we spoke to you all. Look, man, uh, they are still going through it. Um, they came off that win against the Detroit Pistons, which which is good. It, it, a win is a win. Give people credit for doing what they should do. Um, we do believe in that. You guys know how we are. We're very simple here. It's kind of old-fashioned and old school, but you do good, we talk right. You do bad, we're going to tell you about it too. Um, this is the second of the two games they played against Orlando last week. Uh, Orlando, we told y'all last year, Orlando's going to be good. We told y'all. Nobody want to hear us. If you listen, shout out, then you're not surprised about this. Going into the first of the two matchups last week, Orlando won a seven-game win streak. Then they won the eighth one, uh, their first matchup with Washington. Uh, and that one, Palo Benchero didn't do too much, but Franz Wagner showed the heck out, and so did Cole Anthony on their, on their way to a big win. Uh, Orlando shot the ball incredibly well, shot 60 from the floor, 60 plus from three. They shot bad from the free throw line. That was about it. Everything else went in their favor. In the second game, which is what you're watching now, much closer game, um, a slower outing in terms of the pace, in terms of how well they – not the pace, but how well they shot from deep uh, in this one. Washington definitely better. However, you didn't have Paolo Bencaro doing what it is that he does in that first game. It was just friends and company. This time, Paolo joined the party. He finished with 28 points and 13 rebounds. Franz had, an, Franz had another 31. Kuz had 27 on 10 and 18 shooting, uh, which is which is a good night offensively. However, you know, sometimes it's as simple as matchups. The duo of Wagner, or um, I'm sorry, of Wagner and Bancaro outperformed the duo of Kuzma and Avdia. That's it. Like, they outscored him by 20 plus. Um, those two went nuts. Um, the other two, typically, like, they, uh, Denny didn't have a great night. Kuz was solid, but Kuz essentially gave up what he had. So that's a net zero. And Denny struggled, and Franz went nuts. Um, both teams got good contributions from their bench. But Orlando, you just saw a team, there's a reason they had won eight in a row. It's, yes, they're young, but you don't go on a seven-game win streak just because. You're doing things right late in games. And late in this game? Orlando executed a little bit better. Washington had a double-digit lead in this one. Orlando walked it down. Um, they went back and forth. But again, for Washington, it was another one of those games where they couldn't get stops in the fourth quarter. And against good teams, that's going to put you in bad places. Look, 724 left, man. It's a one-point game. A lot of things going right. You're in a good place. Um just not being able to get stops. Washington did do a good job. They threw a zone at Orlando that had them kind of messed up for a while. But Washington didn't take advantage of that stretch. Then Orlando, you know, just being young, they started to understand like, hey, yeah, it's a zone. You know, you get to the middle and shoot. But their they're guys that are getting to the middle are what? Franz is like 6'10". Paolo 6'11". So they're just taking mid-range, comfortable mid-range jump shots. Um, and Jalen Suggs did a great job. But look at Franz, 6'10 guy, comfortable, little guy running out at him. He doesn't see him at all. He just unbothered. Look, get right to the little spot. I'm going to take <laughs> take this midi right here. No issue. That's Washington center in space against Paolo. And that's – Gaff didn't do anything wrong. That's just a tough cover. Um, and Orlando's bench. Uh, you just saw the difference between these two teams. It's, Orlando knows who they are. They have defined roles. And they're a step ahead of the Washington instead of, in terms of where they're going. They also know who their guy is for sure. It's Paolo. Franz is right there, and then you you got Cole, Jalen, and company. They're coming off the bench. They're asked to do a little bit more right now because Markel's out, Wendell Carter's out, Jonathan Isaac just went back out. He's he's never fully there because of injuries, unfortunately. But they're down two starters. Um, 
So they, they won a franchise record nine straight games after, you know, coming out the other side against Washington. Um, Washington's had several days to kind of just recollect, uh, to kind of collect themselves a little bit. Um, they have fallen to three and 16. They have two games this week. The first is Wednesday at home against the 76ers and Philly's one of the better teams in the East so far. Uh, you know, to this point in the season, they have not disappointed. Uh, they kind of got better after that trade. And I'm just going to leave that at that. I'm not going to no specifics. We're going to be mature here, but, um, addition by subtraction, uh, subtraction, it looks like Kelly Oubre is coming back. Uh, into the fold, which is great to hear after what he went through. Um, you know, I think I tell you, you had talked about a little bit already, you know, the hit and run situation uh, with him. Um, and he was balling for them before he got hurt. So they have continued to play well. They're getting a quality player back into their rotation. Um, and then after that, you know, you get a day in between and you go up, go up north just a little bit, quick little day trip, going up to Barclays, you take on the Nets. Um and the thing is, for Washington, while the Nets aren't quite the Sixers, the Nets also have a better record than Washington. So, it, yeah, you have two tough games coming up. You need to get a win. It's it's really that simple. We're going to see if they're able to do that. For those of you that follow our Wizards coverage, get over to, uh, to thefocustv.com and also follow us on social media so you guys don't miss any episode of Wizards Outlook. Uh, we're going to take our second break. When we get back, going to jump into this NFC East. Get to a little bit of rapid fire tape. You do not have to look that sad about it. Like, look, well, before we even get the break, what we're not going to do is act like 10 and 2 is some horrible thing. I do not subscribe to this. And we will talk at length about that game when you get to it. But some of the disingenuous things that have been spewed after that game by folks that aren't, that have nothing to do with either team is crazy. Like, there's been a whole lot of talking by folks that aren't San Fran and aren't Philly and are acting like whatever happened between those two has anything to do with the rest of you. Like, that's their issue. Some of y'all are doing a little too much, and I'm going to sit here peacefully, and I can't wait to see what happens to y'all because some of y'all are doing way too much. Everything's not the same. Um, but I look forward to this NFC, this week's NFC East segment. You're watching the Focus TV. We will return in just a few seconds. Welcome back to the Focus TV. All right, Octavia, the floor is yours. Where do you want to start in this week's NFC East update? Oh, the time has come. <laughs> and... I would like to point out that even my internet does not want me here because it is spotty. Um, but I have graciously come when everything in my body told me not to. But I'm here. Um, I'll save that game for last just so we can have, like you said, an in-depth conversation. I really wanted to just get it over with because it's that bad. But this is actually the game I wanted to start with anyway. Uh, the Washington Commanders played against the Miami Dolphins and lost. I mean, it's crazy to get scored. To, I mean, great to, we got a lot of points scored on us this week as well. But, I mean, 45 points two straight weeks on your defense is just just not good. Um, they lost to the Miami Dolphins 45 to 15. Sam Howe was 12 of 23, 127 yards, one interception, four carries for 21 yards and two touchdowns. He was sacked three times. Brian Robinson Jr. had seven carries for 53 yards, and Curtis Samuels had four receptions for 65 yards. Um, I mean, I think the glaring thing coming out of this game was their defense was just horrible. I mean, granted, don't get me wrong, Miami's offense is very high-powered, one of the best in the league. But it's like the commanders forgot that Tyreek Hill played for the Miami Dolphins. I mean, I think Tyreek even said he was surprised at how open he was. Um, but, you know, I do think the time from the commanders' defense has played well. It's always been up front. Their secondary has always kind of been suspicious, and it don't get no easier when you're playing against arguably the fastest man in the league. And, I mean, shout-outs to Ron Rivera, who took over the defensive calls this week. Again, disinterested. <laughs> um, it was just – it was it was just bad. Um, Miami scored 24 points and registered 247 yards of offense in the first half. Um, 
I mean, just the first half, it was it was bad. At one point, I thought it was going to be a 70 to 20 game again because they definitely could have scored 30 extra points in the second half after they already had 30 in the first half. Um, yeah, it's it's just bad. You know, I, at this point with four games left, uh, although they'll be on a bye this week, um, it's – I would probably start shutting down my better players at this point because it's really no point. Um, if you want to give somebody some kudos, Curtis Samuel has been coming on as of late. Um, he caught four passes for 65 yards, including a 33-yarder on a wheel route um, in which he basically kind of fooled the linebacker with the double move. Um, so definitely give him some kudos because he's been kind of coming on, especially with the absence of Jahan Dawson and as well as, and probably more so, Terry McLaurin. Um, Terry McLaurin is definitely going through it. You know, he's definitely one of the better wide receivers in the league. He just has not had the opportunity to play with a top-tier quarterback ever. Um, so the things he's done in the past with the quarterback's play that he's been given has been amazing, but this, just this year he has not been able to do so. Terry McLaurin doesn't have a 100-yard game receiving at all this season and is in danger of not going over a 1,000 yards receiving for the year, which is unheard of for him. Um, again, just the type of caliber wide receiver that he is. Um, Sam Howe has played well-ish throughout the season, but these last couple of games have not been anything to write home about. Um it's 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 a little on him. It's still a little on the offensive line not being able to pass protect. Um, and then it's a little on the wide receivers. You haven't seen much separation for Terry McLaurin as well as Jahan Dawson. Um, and we know a couple of games ago, Terry McLaurin, you know, had some pivotal drops in the game as well. Um, but to not register a catch is just crazy to me, um, especially with the likes of Eric Bieniemy over there. Um, but I know a lot of people are trying to throw a lot of shade his way, saying he needs to scheme a little bit better for them. But it's not just on him. It, I mean, he can make the scheme and maybe he does need to, you know, beef it up a little bit. But it's always players over plays. The players should be going out there and making it happen, especially, again, a, a player of Terry McLaurin's caliber. Um, it's just been bad. Um, the only other good thing to come out of this, the Commanders are now number four in the draft order. Um, so, I mean, they're in the sweepstakes uh, for, and, and I mean, who knows what's going to happen. It could certainly get higher um, with them only having three games left since they're on a bye this week. Um, definitely get higher. And if they get high enough, baby, and they get one of them quarterbacks, whew, I'm going to feel bad for them. I'm going to feel bad for the quarterback, but I'm sure the Washington Commanders franchise will be ecstatic. Um, I don't know the last time we've seen a good quarterback in Washington, so I'm a little scared for anybody that goes there that has top, you know, playmaking abilities because I'm a little concerned about who's going to be running the show as well. Um, so definitely interested to see what happens. Again, they are on a bye this week. Next week, December 17th, they will play against the Los Angeles Rams, who also is not an easy out. <laughs> and we, we know maybe they haven't been playing their best ball that we've seen in the last couple of years. But uh, whatever they're doing is definitely better than what's going on in Washington. <laughs> so definitely going to be another sighting, you know, and they got to go all the way to L.A. So that's going to be interesting for them. Um, I do want to correct something that I said last week. I was talking about the Giants and them playing on Monday night. I mixed up my weeks. Of course, they were on a bye this past week. They will be playing this upcoming Monday night. Why, I don't know. Um, but they will be playing this upcoming Monday night. They didn't night. flex that out? No, and I, I think there's actually two Monday night games now. I don't know if it's this week or... Oh, we had that better part of the year. It's back to that. I mean, they're flexing stuff already. They flexed the Eagles games to a Monday night, and they said apparently this is the first time they've ever like a game until Monday. I don't know. I don't like it. You know that. So I keep saying that happened. I already know. I know your rules. You don't like nationally televised games. I don't want to see it. Um, but 
it's happening apparently. I have no control of it. I need to write Roger Goodell a letter. Because I also got some other things to talk to him about, about some things he done came out and said recently as well. So I need to maybe write a strongly worded letter to Roger Goodell. But on to the next game. The Dallas Cowboys played this past Thursday night against the Seattle Seahawks. They defeated the Seahawks 41-35. to Dak Prescott was 29-41, 299 yards, three touchdowns, and seven carries for 23 yards. He was sacked four times. Tony Pollard had 20 carries for 68 yards and one touchdown and three receptions for 15 yards. CeeDee Lamb had 12 receptions, 116 yards, one touchdown, and two carries for 30 yards. Jake Ferguson, who's been coming on as of late, tight end, six receptions, 77 yards for one touchdown. And Brandon Cook's back in his bag again, four receptions for 45 yards. Um, Jake Ferguson has definitely increased his production for them. It's definitely been a, a need for them after letting Schultz go uh, to the Texans. Um, and he's finally kind of been able to get into his rhythm as a player. Um, so he caught the six passes for 77 yards, as well as the game winning touchdown with four minutes and 37 seconds to play. Um, when Prescott needed him, he was there um, and he was able to deliver. Um, but if we're going to talk about anything, I mean, granted, let, let's talk about the good that Prescott, you know, seemingly did something that a lot of people criticize him for not usually doing, which is putting the team on his back and getting it done when it needs to, when it needs to happen, um, against a formidable op opponent. This is again, uh, after their three week buys, um, I will consider this a game. Uh, Seattle is no slouch, although they haven't played their best ball this year as well. Um, but they went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Dallas in this game as well, um, and Dak was able to get a win, and that's definitely something that he needs, um, whether for the wins, confidence, whatever. Of course, he won't come out and say any of those things, but definitely something that he needs in his repertoire in order to be able to kind of prove the, you know, the doubters wrong. I'm sure he doesn't care, but um, – that's what needs to happen for people to think of him in a different light, especially with him coming up on a contract year. Um, but their defense was horrible. It, it was, it was, it was bad. And I say horrible. And I, and I say that lightly just because their defense is amazing. They have played very well all year. Dan Quinn has had them guys hitting all year. I mean, people were screaming for Deron Blanks to be defensive player of the year with the six picks. Um, six, uh, pick sixes. Yeah, that sounds weird. Um, but baby, he was getting burned all night. Consistently. What's so funny to me that I always laugh at at times when stuff like this happens is, I, I, as we know, I play fantasy football. I have a DK Metcalf on my team. Um, and I always look at all the fantasy, you know, writers and people and, you know, Everybody told me do not play DK Metcalf, and I'm like, "What? Are you serious?" Oh, everybody against he was, them. He was on the do not play list. Why? I said, I DK anyway, because oh. I ain't got nobody else better than them, and uh, oh. gonna be in the game. Oh. And my man got me forty points, so appreciate you. Well, did a forty um, all come before halftime? <laughs> I don't know. I'm sorry. I don't know, but yeah, but. As bad as their defense was, um, <coughs> excuse me, their, their third down defense was particularly bad. The Cowboys allowed the Seahawks to convert nine of 14 third down attempts, the most this season. That's after allowing seven third down conversions on Thanksgiving against Washington. They also did not register a sack against Geno Smith. If there's a bright spot, Seattle went 0 for 3 on fourth down. So it kind of seemed like... They didn't have their head in the game on third down, but the fourth down rolled around and Seattle, and Seattle decided to take that chance. They buckled in and they got it done, which is what happened at the end of the game as well. Again, I don't know whose idea was it to not block Michael Parsons, but uh, that didn't go well <laughs> at all. I, that, was <laughs> the thing, that. that was the thing that was so weird to me. I heard the explanation <laughs> for it, right? And when I heard the explanation, I wish I hadn't heard the explanation. It did make I'm sitting here like of sense. I don't it, care what the reason is. You block Michael Parsons. On DK, court, on DK, court, whatever it was for the game. Uh, nah, DK man. is having a great day. 
you could go max protect and throw at whoever's guarding DK. But to just be like, well, we thought so and so could get free before. Why? Yeah. You want to tip know. fate like that? I don't know who was in charge of the scouting report that week, but they failed. They should be on suspension. Like, they didn't even try to trip them. They just let them I'm run. Not to say they should lose their job, but they should be on suspension. Um, and again, the defense, you know, was pretty horrible for most of the game. But they, you know, they made the play that they needed to make when they needed it. Um, and then one other little thing: is penalties are starting to creep back in for Dallas again. Uh, Dallas had nine penalties for 127 yards. Um, on two separate drives, the Cowboys' defensive penalty set up easy Seahawk touchdowns. So had those penalties been cleaned up, I think Stephon Gilmore got one in the um, in the end zone. Uh, there was a, a few others. They just all always come in opportune times as well. Um, that set up a lot of those touchdowns for the Seahawks as well. So, um, But at the end of the day, like I always say, a win is a win. You did what you needed to do. You went out there and won it, won the game in a dog fight, to be completely honest. Um, and that's what that's what's needed. So I don't want to say kudos to them because we played them next week, but good job, I guess, in that aspect. Um, so yes, they will be playing um next Sunday night against the Philadelphia Eagles. I'm so tired of all of these got forsaken primetime games. I mean, I I honestly think the Eagles played one or two one o'clock games all year. <laughs> it's ridiculous to be completely right. honest. Look, look, I told one of my friends as an Eagle fan earlier, welcome to being a consistently good team. This is what you get. There, look, there's no quiet Sundays because if if you have one of the games that aren't nationally nationally televised, if you're struggling, they'll cut off another game to show you struggle. Just welcome. Okay, it's so crazy. Just so, welcome to it. Be happy. It means your team is consistently good. It, it comes with the territory. There's no, you can't even be mid in peace anymore. Nope. It just, we, it's gone. Because I mean, I said this last week as well. Like, I don't know how many opportunities they will have to play the way they played in the last couple of weeks, come from behind you know, whatever. And this showed immediately that that was an issue. Now, granted, uh, Philadelphia Eagles played the, the San Francisco 49ers, if you want to call it played them, because I don't think they actually played them. Um, I think they laid down for the for the thing. But don't get me wrong. The 49ers, they knocked them down, but still, I don't really think they played. I don't, I don't know if anybody decided to show up to Lincoln Financial for Deshaun Jackson's retirement game and go out there and play like a bunch of Okay, I'm going to calm down. So they lost to the San Francisco 49ers, 42-19. to 19. Um, Jalen Hurst was 26-45, 298 yards, one touchdown, and seven carries for 20 yards and one touchdown. He was sacked three times. DeAndre Swift had six carries for 13 yards, two receptions for seven yards, total of 20. AJ Brown had eight receptions for 114 yards. And Devontae Smith had nine receptions for 96 yards and one touchdown. I mean, I don't even know where to start. I'll I'll start with this. Um, they started the game well, you know. It was a, it was a nice starting, you know. Hassan with the, with the sack on the first play, you know, they got a couple of uh, three and outs in the first quarter, but they were unable to score touchdowns as opposed to field goals in the first quarter. And after that, that was it. <laughs> I don't know what else happened. Um, the middle of the field is completely wide open, like naked. <laughs> Nobody who played for Philadelphia wanted to step foot in the middle of the field. Now, I don't like to give excuses. I like to give reasons. These are not excuses because you go out there and put your pads on the same way the other team put their pads on. So you go out there and play. People are injured. It's a part of the game. Um, but the loss of uh, Zach Cunningham as the linebacker was so noticeable. And with N'Kobe Dean on IR for the second time this year. And, I mean, honestly, I don't like to use this either as a reason or an excuse. But they played three games in a span of 13 days. 
Um, there was a lot of rest for the 49ers, as will the Dallas Cowboys have a lot of rest as well. I think that contributes to some of it. But at the end of the day, that's how the schedule has been laid out for the entire year. You were aware of that. We should have been prepared for it. Um, yeah, it was just, it was just. Um, and then to make it worse, uh, the other linebacker didn't play that great either. Nicholas Morrow, I mean, he didn't play great. Uh, Josh Sweat didn't play great. He had a pair of costly penalties. Um, I mean, Nicholas Morrow got burnt, as you can see in this picture, by Christian McCaffrey for a 33-yard reception to set up a third-quarter uh, score for the 49ers. He missed a tackle on Samuel's 48-yard catch and run touchdown in the following season, a series, which, of course, definitely turned the game upside down and heavily, heavily, heavily in favor for the uh, 49ers. Um, they weren't able to do what they've done these last couple of weeks, go into the locker room and regroup and, you know, uh, adjust. No adjustments came. They were not in the building. Um I feel like the best adjustment we had was our head of security on the sideline. I mean, that was probably the best player of the game. I mean, he got somebody ejected. I don't know. Um, so shots out to Dom, um, even though it seems like he might not be allowed on the sideline anymore. I don't know. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's, it's definitely it's things because of the rivalry, the game from last year. But on the silver lining side of it, as Wilson stated earlier, we are still 10 and 2. We are still in the league. We have still have the best record in the league. And we pretty much knew at some point, again, like I said, that they weren't going to be able to skate by with um, the type of play that they have been having the last couple of weeks. And it was kind of unthinkable that they would get through the gauntlet part of their season unscathed and not lose to Kansas City, Buffalo, 49ers, the Cowboys. And, I mean, it, just to see the way that they played against the, the Cowboys, the Seahawks as well. So they're definitely in the thick of the, a tough part of their season. So to have only lost one game so far in that is, you know, the silver lining of it. Um, hopefully Dallas Goddard will be back next week. He's trending to play. Um, and then probably the best news of it all. Um, uh, I, I guess his name is Shaq now. Um, I'll, he's still Darius Leonard to me. It's weird. But Shaquille Darius Leonard um, has agreed to sign a one-year deal with the 49ers, uh, with the uh, Philadelphia Eagles, um, which could not have come at a better time. Um, granted, he may not be the player he once was after multiple, uh, I think it's back surgeries. He's been having some explosiveness issues, which caused him not to be able to get on the field in Indianapolis. Um, and he was basically, you know, deciding between the, uh, the Eagles and the Cowboys. I'm just glad, granted, I'm hoping he plays very, very well for us. Um, and I think he has the potential to, of course, but I'm just glad he didn't go to Dallas, like, this is one of those signers where I'm just like, hey, just don't, we'll take him. I'll work out. He don't, he ain't nowhere else working out. Um, so we'll have to take that. Um, another thing also um, on the defensive side, uh, I mean, it was just bad. They missed tackles. And even hearing James Bradbury say that they were actually having a lot of issues with the pre -snap. Um, very obvious. Um, that's just something they, they can't allow. I mean, Philadelphia allowed 456 total yards of offense in the game after limiting the 49ers to negative six yards in the first quarter. Um, so I don't know. You guys know I like interesting stats, and usually they're against the commanders and giants, and I'm like, oh, that's crazy. Um, but the last time the Eagles allowed offensive touchdowns on six consecutive drives like they did in this game was October 9th of 1966 in a 56 to 7 loss to Dallas. <laughs> I mean, it hasn't happened since 1966, guys. So this was 
an ASS whooping if I've ever seen one. Um, but my only gripe that I have is for people I haven't talked to in over a year, if not longer, <laughs> yeah. to text my phone on Sunday evening. Yep. Yep. And I would call him out because you know him, and I don't know what he decided to do that day. Um, Matt Samuels, uh, sir, I have not seen or talked to you in at least a year, if not longer. The fact that you had the audacity to text me when y'all beat us, we are forever beefing. So I just want him to know that he knows that because I definitely let him know. I had Commanders fans texting me. Oh, I okay. Said, so like, look, okay. So cool. I, I've been waiting, right? So let me say this one time for the one time for everybody who took victory laps because the Eagles lost. Your team didn't do it. Your team can't do that to them. There's no, there's no trans uh, transitive property. Y'all didn't win. San Fran won. That's between San Fran and the Eagles. The problems that presented the Eagles, none of your teams can present those same issues. <laughs> so stop it. Like, I'm going to be completely honest. They're 10 and 2 for a good reason. We saw Buffalo, who's supposed to be a good team, with an all world quarterback, have 500 yards and get an L. That dis the discussion in that game should have been how'd you lose, sir? Y'all had 500 yards. I was talking to one of my, my guys earlier, my guy Smooth. He's a Philly fan. Like I was saying to him again, congrats for being a good team. You know what this is? Y'all just went to a Super Bowl. You lost players. You lose coaches. This is y'all's down year. You're 10 and 2. Y'all will be back to who you are next year. And you know what's going to happen because of this? And y'all probably don't appreciate it right now. You know how he doesn't care about linebackers? He's going to go get linebackers because of this year. Oh, absolutely. Because – and again, I'm sure because we let a lot of them go last year. Not only that, I think y'all are going to go try to find ones in the mold that we have, not just some guys, but the types that you need. And I'm not saying it's Fred and Dre's and stuff growing on trees, but I wouldn't be surprised. Y'all love calling up the Titans to come take good players, right? We had a linebacker that played in San Fran who's not there because good teams have to make decisions. You can't pay everybody. My exactly. guy Aziz Al Shire is in Tennessee balling out. We don't know what Tennessee's doing. They, they're in the midst of a dumpster fire. I guarantee you, Howie about to pick up that phone, send Kevin Byer back to Tennessee, and Aziz going head over here in the offseason. Like, let's like again, and this is why I wasn't you did you hear me say anything to you about this? I didn't. No. And, and the reason why I didn't, because, yeah, I'm a fan, but the two teams that played each other last year don't exist anymore. OK, yeah. like they don't exist anymore. Last year was and I noticed because my team's been kind of good with NFC Championship game. You lose players, you lose coaches. I know what that crap's like. Y'all are going through this for the very first time. It sucks. All right. It, it sucks. I know what it looks like. It's garbage. That's why I didn't say anything. I thought it was tremendous that y'all been able to hang around. How y'all been able to hang around? Because I know y'all not the same team. There are holes. They need to be fixed. People need to leave. Young blood needs to come in. I know that because I know what it looks like. My team has tried that. Sometimes my team fails at it. Matter of fact, they cut a dude. They drafted in the third round. Um, TDP got cut today. He ain't do nothing. We took him the third round. People laugh all the time. But you know what happens with good teams? You swing, you miss, you adjust, and you fix. That's it. I love TDB to death. I would have loved to see what he could become. You know what the Niners did? They was like, oh, Carolina tripping. Here's all the picks. Give me Christian McCaffrey, and I don't care that we missed on the third round pick. Howie doesn't ever rest on his lures. Y'all will be whatever y'all are lacking right now. Y'all will go get those things because we're going to have to deal with each other for the years to come. And that's all it's – that's what it's going to be. I'm not being funny. I'm telling the honest guy truth. Like, this year right now, it sucks for y'all because the thing that y'all are weak at is our coach's bag. It's his bag. He puts good linebackers in hell. I don't know if people saw a couple weeks ago play Tampa Bay. 
Bro, Devin White and Levante David are amazing together. Do y'all know what Kyle put them through? They was questioning everything they saw. That's and they're two aliens. So no disrespect to whoever Philly, this version of Shaq Leonard, whatever, whatever you want to say. Bro, they put they put some of the best linebackers in football in hell. Philly doesn't have that tier linebacker right now. It's just a bad matchup. But that doesn't mean all y'all getting excited. Y'all don't got Christian. Y'all don't got B.A. Y'all don't got Debo. Y'all <laughs> you don't got Big Trent. And you damn sure don't have Kyle. So your team can't do this crap. Shut up. They 10 and 2. Shut up. Like, that has nothing to do with y'all. That is heavyweight team activity. Mind your business. Just, just, just let it go. They're 10 and 2, y'all. They're 10 and 2. They lost two freaking games. I needed to. Like, like just, just put it in perspective. No, nah, I wanted to have it because I've seen people go crazy. I'm like, oh, look at what they did. Like, oh, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Bro, and then to make matters worse for y'all, y'all catching us after we had the dude who literally stopped this offense from being this for four years. We had an active saboteur under center for four years. So again, the league's just like there's a there's a stat right now, and this is why this is stupid because people talk about man, look what the Niners did, bro. So far since C Mac's been there and all the weapons are healthy, they're 16 and 0. That means not just the Eagles have had an issue. That means when they are healthy and they start and them them get them dudes start a game and finish the game together, never lost. That's not an Eagles problem. That's an NFL problem. The NFL has not found an issue. For that group, like right now, their biggest issue is health. Because they have the three-game slide. He's missing Trent. He's missing Debo. I'm not going to lie. The Browns Browns a tough team. Those are Debo games. There's four games a year. Kyle got to spam the button. The Eagles were a Debo game. That's when you lay down on a button. You press it. You press it all the way through. And then you're, gonna, you're not going to press the button for a couple more weeks. But that's because the Eagles are heavyweights. People talk about what happened to AJ and Devontae. Bro, who else's defense can do what they just did? Like, why are y'all talking? Washington, like I saw Washington fans, like, look at Chase not helping. Bubba. Bro, Chase is one of the reasons they were able to execute the game plan. They didn't tell you watch the game. Did it look like the Niners pass rushers were told to go get Jalen? Or were they told to keep that boy in, like, behind the line of scrimmage? They were told, That was the most disciplined, boring rush game in the world. And you know what? I can do it. Because they got two of the best linebackers in football, and one of the two ain't number two. And nobody can – you can't can, – who can copy what Fred does? Like, get out of here, y'all. You can't hold that again. Then this week, they're going to go play whatever the hell Dallas got in the middle of their defense. Like, come on, man. We just saw DK go nuts against Bland. What y'all What y'all think AJ and them about to do after – they're free. None of the crap they just saw this week they about to see next week. It's a whole bunch of man. There's dudes that don't want to hit. Like, you played a team. Like, how many teams in the league got, got secondary people who want to hit? Like, I saw people get mad at the Philly. Bro, we're in a soft part of the NFL. People don't hit like that. So then y'all play one of the only teams where you got psychos, psychos in the secondary and psychos that block at wide receiver and people, people talking. Is that replicable across the league? Matter of fact, didn't y'all put uh didn't y'all put Miami in a box? What's us and Miami run the same scheme? You know what the difference is? Somebody's physical, somebody ain't. It's not the, it's styles make fights. Tyreek is fast and everybody on our team. But you tell me what y'all think easy to catch, uh the tackle, Tyreek or deep or Tyshawn. What y'all think's easier? You got people who come look like they're looking to hit you. On offense, bro, people don't like dealing with that. And then, like y'all whole division, y'all all play each other. Everyone got the same issue in the middle of the field. Yeah, <laughs> y'all only y'all only get like y'all only deal with that like what the years that you play the NFC West and the years you play wherever the Ravens are. Outside of that, y'all all take turns beating on each other with the same issues. Nobody has good linebackers in the NFC East, so I don't understand how anybody in that division, a fan of anybody. It's talking about anybody else, middle of the field. Washington, we're going to see y'all in a couple weeks. Why are y'all talking? 
Why y'all talking? Oh, I didn't know y'all played them. Jesus Christ. But we play it makes sense. Everybody plays the same division. But, but right. I'm but I'm but I'm just saying, like, it's crazy to say people like to see people say stuff like if if everyone could do what that team just did to Philly, they would have 10 wins. Yeah, that's true. Right. I, will say, I will say that I give at least the Cowboys fans that I know credit because none of them hit my phone. Because I think they knew better. But 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 that's the other thing. How could you say anything? The same thing mm-hmm. happened, and they were less competitive. What what, what yeah. can you say? Yeah, so that's why I was like, I'm glad none of them decided to step out. But it was the fact I'm like, but didn't y'all just lose to the Dolphins 45 to 15? Like, shouldn't you be worried about that? But and yeah. that's the thing I don't get. They lost to the track version of it. Bro, y'all want to go deal with the, the fighting version of it? <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> Then you got the Rams who are in the middle. They not yeah. fight the fight like they're feisty but not physical. They're fi- they're finesse but more physical than finesse. Like what y'all like? Y'all just gotta stop, man. Like again, that scheme is is different. It gives people's issues. And and again, like I don't care who the linebackers were, bro. How many res- there's how many how many running backs in the league you could slide out and you have to treat them like a wide receiver? Not a lot. Cool. How many people can do what Tyshawn does? Not a lot. Cool. How many have those two things with Brandon? Cool. Great. Wonderful. How many people have a Kittle? Oh, we're in 2023 without fullbacks. You got people got a juice laying around? What are y'all talking about? This is literally a matchup specific thing. Stop it. Bro, they can slot their fullback out and we'll give them the ball on purpose. Just leave it alone. There, the other thing, uh, and I'm sorry, I hate to get up. Like you got me defending your team. It's crazy. No, I appreciate. Um, like I they know. lost Javon Hargrave. This is what happens when you lose people. The best player on their defensive line plays in San Francisco. This is not a knock on Jalen Carter. I love him to death. The boy two years away from being who he's going to be. Exactly. Nothing wrong with that. I love Jordan Davis. He's a couple years away from being what he's going to be. We went through this. We lost Buckner. What the difference is when we lost Buckner, we kept Jimmy Ward and a couple other folks. Philly went through a situation because they had to pay their quarterback. Mind you, they, they had a quarterback. They had to okay. pay him. They had to lose more, which meant no TJ Edwards. Uh, whoever played next to him, and they had to lose that. Like they had to lose more, and because like they got caught with their pants down, and it's not even really bad because it's matchup specific, they just gotta get linebackers. They're going to fix this issue. However, this is the down year, they're down years 10 and 2. All y'all need to be quiet. Like, just be quiet. They're gonna get right, just like the Chiefs. It's a down year. You think they're not gonna get that boy nobody to throw to? You think oh, all them drops and all that stuff that's happening this year when they losing mm-hmm. because people are just bums? You think it's just gonna stay like that? Come on, y'all! Like we don't got it. We, we don't have to do this. It's the truth. Javon Hargrave was a destroyer of worlds last year because he won so quick. I know. I know. Uh, what's my man's name? Son Reddick is so fast and athletic. He doesn't win as quick as Javon Hargrave does. And they took Javon. They lost Javon Hargrave. And they dropped them next to somebody else who is a destroyer of worlds who doesn't get any credit. Like when we lost Buckner, we still had Armstead. They're they're about the same age. Y'all lost Hargraves and had Fletch, but Fletch is older. It wasn't like y'all lost Hargrave and still like you didn't lose a 30-year-old and still have a 30-year-old. You lost someone who's still going up to somebody who's on the back half. Those are two totally different things. It, and it matters. So what you had this week, and again, this is why I've been quiet about it, because silly me living in reality, ain't the same teams, bro. They just not the same teams. Literally, one of the, the, the best defensive player the Eagles had is wearing red and gold. They have to adjust to that. Like, it's going to take some time. <laughs> Like it's gonna take time. Also, because of Washington, they completed our defensive line. So why are y'all talking? Yeah, I knew I was. I knew I wasn't gonna like that. Just, you know. said you weren't, but 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 this is what I'm saying. So we had the down year last year. Like, what's it called? We went up there, missed on a quarterback. All that stuff happened. Lost some players. What have you? Good teams have down years. You lost coordinators, and this is the other thing. 
this is this is the other thing. And then I'll shut up. I'm, I'm sorry, folks. Just because I've been my team won and y'all made me mad watching some of y'all talking. It makes no sense. Like it, it makes no sense. Um, it's uh Sirianni. This is his first go round as a head coach, right? His first go round as a head coach. Brett, do y'all understand what it's like when when uh, uh people lose folks off their staff? That is a hell of an adjustment. Everybody's not used to it. Andy been around, uh, uh, Big Red been around forever. He know how to deal with that. Kyle, we yeah, we, we made fun of Kyle being a Nepo baby and all that. Nepo baby was raised in this. He know how to move with that. But we on our third defensive coordinator. That's true. Like in like the last, what, four or five years? <laughs> Bro, look. Okay. So the Texans over there doing what they doing. That's, that's our most recent defensive coordinator. They yep. offensive coordinator just left our building. That's who's over there. My man, Mikey McD, down in Miami. Well, Bill, need to come out of y'all. Come on, let's not let's not do this. We don't need to do this. You got Big Salah over there on the Jets. He also got some some of our, our coaches. But again, the difference is um uh the difference is Kyle's the OC. All them other people help. We never lost our play designer. Like there's things that we lose, but there's things there's some things that are constant. If you notice all the people he let go. There's like five triple OGs that are on his staff that, that'll probably die with him. He mm -hmm. lets the young dudes leave. There's Johnny Holland, the linebacker coach. Uh, next time you, if you see the night, there's an old black dude on the sideline, dark skinned dude with glasses. He's always talking to Fred or whatever. That's the linebacker coach, right? He he been with this. He's he's he belongs to the Shanahan family. Like that's family. That's them. Remember Chris Forrester <laughs> who got in trouble in Miami for the for the coke, the offensive line coach. Uh huh. Shanahan dude. As soon as he got, as soon as he got, uh, you know that that stuff died down. That's the that's the offensive line coach in San Fran. But a lot of the time, what happened was people were giving Mike McDaniel's credit for the run game. It's Chris Forrester. Chris Forrester didn't leave the building. Our defensive coordinator has changed. You know who hasn't changed? Chris Kasarik, a descendant of Jim Washburn, who is our defensive line coach. But that's someone who's been through it, who knows how to maneuver this. Bro, when it's your first time going through this. Where everybody's new, even if the schemes technically the same, it's it's a different voice, it's a different way to look at it. There's an adjustment period. Yeah, people don't get matter of fact, and I'm gonna say this to, to 40 whiner fans, because y'all y'all do this every time there's a new coordinator. You whine, you beat, you come you complain about everything. Every single time someone someone is being asked to execute a scheme that they didn't come up with and they have to get used to how to how to run it. And one of the things that makes a difference is you get all these pieces, and I think sometimes people get enamored with what they have that sometimes simple is better. And right now you got Desai and Brian Johnson trying to figure out what's what over there, right? Trying to figure out what to do. But for Desai, he doesn't have Javon Hargrave. He don't have TJ Edwards. And not to be rude, don't – I think they it's more of a Seattle type thing. The corners they got – Ain't what he needs to do what he wants to do. But nobody wants to have that conversation because y'all too childish and like yelling. They're going to replace them corners to get corners that they like because the the, the uh, that Seattle type corners, they come up and hit. That's not what this is. This is man to man finesse. And again, personnel matchup. Like, matter of fact, Tariq Willens got benched in Seattle. All right. San Fran was running straight at the big boy. He's 6'4", and he won't try to hit. P. Carroll was like, what we're not going to do is be out here at 6'8", not trying to hit nobody. He sat his butt down. So, again, if the side coming out of that tree, do you think Darius Slade and James Bradbury are the type of corners that Sean Desai believes in? The boy can't even run his scheme fully. Come on, y'all. None of them dudes in his secondary is what he probably honestly would like. I'm sure he wants. No, a, yeah. I'm sure he wants a thumper, and he wants somebody with range on the back end. He don't got neither of them things. I'm sure he wants two corners that can play press man and come put come put their nose in the middle of a run game. Neither one of them dudes wants. They're they're very disinterested in both of those things. But y'all mad at the quarterback? Not one is a rookie. I think if, if Sidney Brown stayed away, he is. I like I him. Think, I like I think him. He'll come up and hit. He'll I like definitely him. Come up and hit, but but again, he's but just too green. But, but but again, that's one versus like on our side, we got the rookie Jair coming in. Everybody hits, so Jair's comfortable. 
Like if you don't hit, you don't play. But yeah, we're getting mad at a defensive coordinator when he's not in charge of personnel. Like y'all do understand that all defensive coordinators, if you have the same stuff, it's not the same. Like technically, you like Salah, he loved his cover three boy. He loved his cover three so bad it cost us a Super Bowl. <laughs> Love this cover three so bad. Just, just wouldn't do it. So now you got yeah. uh, what's, called, uh, what's my man's name? D'Amico. Love cover four. He loved quarters. So we had to have an adjustment with that. And now Steve Wilkes, OG, OG came over there. He's like, bro, y'all had man to man corners for five years. How about we let y'all play man? It was an adjustment. So just maybe just question that real quick, Eagles fans. Think Sean Desai has 11 people that can execute what Sean Desai would like to do, or Sean Desai trying to get by with what he has, what he wants. And then on the other side, like to keep it a buck, the two best players your O line are old, they, they age, right? It's a part of life. That's it, like that's it. And the youngsters ain't quite ready yet, but everybody can't expose y'all. It is what it is, like it's just part of being a good team. I've never seen so many people mad for losing their second game of the season. They, they tend to. It's, it's going to be okay. You don't I have to play. so much like, better. I feel like this was a therapy session that I needed. I got you, but it, it's just crazy watching all the crazy stuff people were saying because it doesn't make any sense. Well, see, the thing about that is I haven't watched anything. I ain't been on the internet. Oh, no, you, <laughs> I, you know yeah, you I, like, I don't. Okay, so perfect, <laughs> perfect example, right? Y'all are trying to y'all are adjusting to things that you lost. Okay, so this is the first time a Kyle life he got the type of running back that he wanted. Think about that. How long that boy been coaching? Has he ever had anything like Christian? Absolutely not. So how could you how could you in your right mind understand that folk that Carolina just gave this crazy creative person? His infinity gauntlet of running backs. He been waiting for he been waiting for this his entire life. He's tried to do it through multiple people. Everybody can't do it. That's why the dude don't come off the field. That's I why he, I don't even know who y'all backup is. To be honest, uh, Eli Mitchell and even then Eli stay hurt sometimes. But even then, like the worst. Okay, so before they traded for Christian, Eli Mitchell almost ran for a thousand yards his rookie year. However, this offense ain't this. Christian's so good, he had Jimmy looking good. Like, this this was one of the top players in the league that got traded to somebody who sorely, to somebody who kept trying to patchwork a position. And y'all gave him that. That's the issue. Be mad at that. That, that ain't got nothing to do with Philly. That, 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 uh, that gravity, when they move people around, and you got to honor all the moments, the movements, that's not a Philly-specific issue. Right. If they put Debo on motion, you don't follow. What you think going to happen? They just going to give him the ball. If you slide Christian out and it's not a safety foul, them, it's a linebacker. They just going to throw him the ball. <laughs> if George go in motion and you don't go with him, they just going to throw him the ball. So it's not an equal specific thing. Do y'all know the numbers that little weird geek is putting up right here this year? Brock going crazy because he's just doing simple things like <laughs> – Oh, I like that matchup, Coach. Here. <laughs> hey, come, look, he come up to the line. He look at the numbers. He go, ooh, you shouldn't be on him. And y'all trying to act like it's ego specific? Like, this is something that's been brewing for years. And this this is this iteration of the Eagles. First time going through something. Right, it's part of being a good team that happens. You lose stuff, it happens. You can't, like, it's not quite the same. I'm so sorry it's not quite the same. It's It's not the same. Like you got somebody who knows what their scheme is and keep keep adding to it, adding to it, adding to it, adding to it. Like, matter of fact, the chase thing, and I'm gonna shut up in a little bit. The chase thing, they haven't had, they haven't had that yet. Shout out to Washington. They hadn't had that. They've never had a fourth person that you had to actually honor opposite Nicholas Bosa. It's been triple team Nick, double team Eric, and them other two, man. They get here if they get here. Then the Eagles had to pay Jalen. You deserve to pay Jalen. You deserve to pay Jalen. And the Niners were like, we ain't got to pay Brock for two more years. Get 40 million to Javon Hargrave. Oh, we don't got to pay Chase nothing. One year rental. Come here, buddy. Like, how can you? 
those things are comparable. You got the Eagles who's trying to put their stuff back together after losing something. Like, that was the year they just made a run. It's hard to stay together after you made a run and you have to pay your guy. This is year one after paying your guy. This is what it That's normally looks like. They're 10 and 2. Y'all have to relax. They're going to be right next year. So get all your jokes in. Get all that crap in. They're going to be beating your team's head like they was beating them this year. Except next year, it won't be comebacks. You happy? Then next year, you're going to be watching them – and San Fran played, it's still going to be heavyweight battle, and your team's mid. What are y'all talking about? Like, nothing's going to change for some of y'all. Like, nothing's going to change at all. And you need to pray to how we figure out that linebacker thing, especially in a division with no linebackers. That division is in disarray. The first team to get a linebacker, man, it's like the arms race. Just <laughs> <laughs> regular Levante Day before a couple of years, and Devin White. And just And you know how we be finessing people like – who knows what's going to happen? But, like, it's, it's just crazy. I was watching everybody, and I watched a bunch of it this week because I watched people go crazy when San Fran lost three in a row. It was like, oh, my God, they're frost. The rookie kicker missed the kick against Cleveland. People got hurt. Kirk Cousins went nuts, bro. <laughs> Sometimes Kirk goes nuts. They ain't execute, they lost. Cool. It happens. The Eagles at 10 and 2. I've never seen people got smoke for a 10 and 2 team. And also, your team didn't do that to them. So, what are y'all excited about? Yeah. Your team don't even have one of the things of the team that did that to them. Like, bro, they got like infinity stones of skill position players. <laughs> don't nobody else in the league got five of those things like that. Which I, which I thought about. But we're going to see y'all next week, man. We appreciate y'all. Uh, so I tell you, happy to help. You know, I just want to have that discussion because it was bothering me and my team won. I can actually watch, I think I can actually watch ESPN and, and, and stuff tomorrow. I'm happy to help. It was just, I've never seen people be like, oh, Team X is frauds, then they beat the team you don't like, so now they're the greatest thing in the world. And the team you don't like that lost, let me check my notes, two games is trash, huh? What are we, what are we doing? Like, <laughs> I saw DK. Be put in the playpen two weeks ago, and then last week against the defensive player of the year, have career stats by half time. Yeah. So maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm crazy. I don't know what I'm talking about. Maybe DK gets some get back this week. Who knows this week in the NFL? But I know that um I know Mooney doesn't get the pick sixes that Bland gets, but um I know AJ Brown in one on one jump ball situations, he he gonna come down with that against little Bland. Mooney a different dude, but y'all carry on. Because I swear to God, if you get a jump ball this week, you just go top shelf with somebody. I got jokes. Y'all better not, like, unfollow me. Because I got a bunch of jokes. That secondary stinks. <laughs> and just because another team was physically able to do something to Philly, y'all late. What y'all doing? What y'all doing? Ain't no Fred in the middle of that field. Jalen finna be moving. <laughs> Talk about some jail and won't run him. Well, bro, where he was about to go? <laughs> you want him to die? <laughs> Very I, smart. He did not want to die. I, David, you understand? Look, I was sitting there watching the game. I was mad when they put the man back in. I was like, what are y'all doing? Do you not care about him? Didn't you just pay him? And then when they took, then they took, they took some of my dudes out. I was like, thank you, Lord. They took them dudes out. Because I don't want nothing to happen to that boy. Because y'all are reckless. He should have sat down. You don't need to go back in. Whatever happened, happened. A little pointless stats at the end. Sirianni, you got to do better about that. Don't you just paid that man? You don't risk that man's health. It's not worth it. A whole bunch of serial killers and psychos out there. It is not worth it. There was somebody over there like love to get a big hit on Jim. Matter of fact, the concussion test. Orrin Burks got the hit. Yeah. Matter of fact, how many other teams Jalen get one on one with a linebacker in that much space? Is Jalen hit somebody with a move and just skedaddling? Pretty much, yeah. Everybody talking crazy. Y'all don't got Fred. I don't want to hear that energy. I've been telling y'all Fred been amazing since year two. And y'all like, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't hear that. We're not gonna do that. We're not gonna be like, yay, the Eagles did something bad. Y'all didn't do it. So I can't wait to see what happens. Um, with no linebacker, you over there. Uh, what's it called? Like, uh, this what y'all play Monday night, Sunday night, Sunday night. Yeah, I'll be tuned in because if the middle, if the middle of that field gets cooked, I'm going to laugh again because it means nothing changed and all that laughter was pointless. 
absolutely pointless and shambles. They still in control in the NFC. But they got to lose two more games to lose the number one seed. What, what are we doing? But y'all have a great week. Make sure you follow Focus TV. We'll see you guys very soon.